Hi everyone. Well, I may have to refer to some notes here, but a while ago, um, one of the YouTubers sent me an email and said, I wonder if this is why you are so cheerful all the time, because generally I am pretty happy and and pretty cheerful and so someone you know sometimes people think that's a little bit bizarre anyway this guy said I've just seen this thing on YouTube by a woman called Jill Bolte Taylor she's a uh, brain scientist and uh, she suffered a stroke she um, she went through all the motions it actually took her eight years to get back from having the stroke to being normal again or whatever we call normal and she has written about it and because she is a brain scientist, she was able to actually understand completely what was happening to her, even when her mind, uh, even when the left side of her brain shut down piece by piece, she was able to um, understand what was going on and later verbalise it for us. So this is the book, My Stroke of Insight. Now, if you know anyone who's had a stroke or, um, or you're just interested in this sort of thing, I really recommend this book and you know what I always thought that you know when you go and visit someone at the hospital and you um, you sort of rush in and you sort of all cheery and chirpy and you just talk a hundred miles an hour well I do anyway well from this I learnt that when someone's had a stroke that that isn't what you do you actually have to be very quiet and um, slow and allow them time to think and anyway there's that's apart from the fact that she's listed all these things in the back of the book there's like 40 points that will help. And remember when I met Charlie Teo, that amazing neurosurgeon at the Shandon lunch that I went to, I was telling him about this book and I actually have emailed Jill Balty taylor and she emailed me back, which I'm so excited about. And I just received another email the other day saying that she's going to be on Oprah, I think coming up. What's the date today? I think maybe even on Monday. So make sure you tune into that because I think that will be so interesting to watch. Anyway, so what she was saying was the left side of your brain is sort of the mathematical, analytical side, you know, the, the side that is the smart, you know, academic side, I guess you would say. Anyway, I guess because I'm more creative and, um, and my job is creating stuff, you know, I'm a jewellery designer, you can see on my art room in the back here, um, I guess I really feel like I do live more in the right side of my brain. So this book really rang true to me because... What happened to Jill was her left side of the brain shut down so much so that she was really able to access this right, spiritual, happy, content side that she'd never really uh, zoned in on before. Now, I'm just looking down here. There's certain things, there's certain lines that I really like in here that I've um, underlined if I've got. Okay, so her mother was very instrumental in helping her recover and she came to her house and, and uh, stayed with her. And... Jill said that when she had the stroke, every tiny little task that she learnt, like whether it was even just, uh, gosh, lifting her hand or learning to sit up all over again, all those things, she found that when people really celebrated her achievements, as we all like, don't we? You know, we all like to have our achievements celebrated, but she really enjoyed it and they needed to celebrate every little task. She had to learn how to put her shoes and socks on again and she had to be taught things like that your socks go on before the shoes, like just things that we all sort of grow up with. So she had to really start at the beginning again. And I love this quote here. She says, having been born to my mother was truly my first and greatest blessing. Being born to her a second time has been my greatest fortune. Now that is the height of being grateful. I think that's so beautiful that she acknowledged her mother in such a gorgeous way. Now, hang on, I'm, I've written little notes for the things I really like. Okay, so regarding the positive and negative stuff, she says a lot of stroke survivors complain that they are no longer recovering. You know how sometimes people go, oh, well, I'm never going to get that back or whatever. She actually believes that because of the plasticity of the brain that you can actually fully recover, which I find so intriguing. She says, I often wonder if the real problem is that no one is paying attention to the little accomplishments that are being made, which is what I was just sort of talking about. Um... Recovery can be derailed by hopelessness. So, you know, you've got to be, oh, wow, look, she can do that or whatever. Okay, so where am I up to now? All oh, my little pages. I feel like I'm at school when I highlight things. But this book, gosh, what an amazing book. Okay, so she then talks about visualising, which was instrumental to her recovery. And, and it took her five years to be able to jump from rock to rock amongst beach, along the beach. And she said... 
I had dreamed of skipping up steps every day since the stroke. I held the memory of what it felt like to race up the steps with abandon. By replaying this scene over and over in my mind, I kept that circuitry alive. So she's, she knows, you know, what actually happens with the brain. And I could get my body and mind coordinated enough to make it reality. So she knew from being a neuroscientist that, um, that she was able to get these things back, whereas a lot of people perhaps would have given up. Okay, so it's really interesting because you all know, well, all the Australians know and probably people who watch my YouTubes regularly, we just had Rob Guest passed away, pass away who, who is in our Wicked um, stage show and he died of a stroke at 58. And when I heard on the Wednesday night that he had had the stroke, all I could think of was that I was going to get this book to his family because I thought this will be instrumental. It said he'd had a massive stroke and I thought, well, Jill had a massive stroke and I'm going to get this to, to the family so they can read it. And, and I woke up the next morning, he passed away. So um, for people who have family members, can't recommend this highly enough. Okay, so now where am I up to? What did I like next? Um, oh, I love this bit too. Jill says, my stroke of insight is that at the core of my right hemisphere, that's the creative side, um, at the core of my right hemisphere consciousness is a character that is directly connected to my feeling of deep inner peace. It is completely committed to the expression of peace, love, joy and compassion in the world. So I loved that. Now let me see. I believe the more time we spend running our inner peace, compassion circuitry, then the peace, compassion we project into, uh, then the more peace and compassion we'll project into the world, and ultimately the more peace and compassion we will have on the planet. So what she's tapped into, she's she's been a neuroscientist. All of a sudden, she's discovered that there is far more to this universe than we know. And she actually, after she had the stroke, she couldn't even really connect um, the the lines around her body. She she felt like all her energy was one. So it's so interesting. Um, I've got so many things underlined. Okay, she says he, She said that beforehand she was a little bit more negative. She says, the portion of my left mind that I chose not to recover was the part of my left hemisphere character that had the potential to be mean, worry incessantly, or be verbally abusive to either myself or others. Frank, frankly, I just didn't like the way these attitudes felt physiologically inside my body. My chest felt tight and I could feel my blood pressure rise and the tension in my brow would give me a headache. Now, I feel like that. I am much, I feel much happier when I'm speaking nicely about someone and, and being happy than the whole negative thing. So somehow I've just got that built in, which is great. And I wonder if that is because, you know, that's what I do on the creative side. And then she talks about being kind and she says... For me, it's really easy to be kind to others when I remember that none of us came into this world with a manual about how to get it all right. So I think that's fab. Okay, my last bit. Um, well, there's so much in this book you've got to get. Um, okay, self-talk, negative self-talk. I'm a devout believer that paying attention to our self-talk is vitally important for our mental health. In my opinion, making the decision that internal verbal abuse is not acceptable behaviour is the first step towards finding deep inner peace. So a lot of people really bag themselves and, and beat themselves up about all sorts of stuff. And I'm by no means saying that there's no such thing as mental illness or anything like that because I do, you know, of course there is and, and there are times when medication is necessary and it's not just simply a matter of saying, well, I'm going to choose to be happy. But there are times when you can choose your reactions and your emotions and, and how you react to things, which I've got in here somewhere. But anyway, this is a brilliant book. Please go and buy it. And at the end, she sort of says, if nothing else, well, I think I like the whole book myself, but it says here 40 things that she needed the most. So if you know someone who's had a stroke, you can read the 40 things right at the very back page. And Charlie Teo said he's actually read those 40 things and now he's going to read the book. Okay, bye everyone. Hope that was helpful. Bye.